Yes, God family. Here to bring you a follow-up to the story that I shared in my stories earlier. I shared an incident where I um, kind of got into it with a customer. So I'm going to wait a couple minutes, couple seconds for everybody to come on in because I want to tell y'all the tea. Okay? It's tea time. We're about to have some tea. All right, we're going to have some tea and some some spiritual crumpets. Okay? So I want to share about the situation that I talked about on my stories earlier today. And I wanted to talk about um, kind of the outcome and the resolution because I feel like there are a bunch of um, things that can be gained for everyone in this. Okay? Um, from the perspective of a business owner from the perspective of a wellness professional, and just from the perspective of someone who is very big into um, putting out great things into the world, okay? So really briefly to recap, if um, anyone didn't catch my stories earlier, there was a whole situation with a client that I had or a potential client that I had last week. She called me up. She wanted to schedule an appointment to come get a steam. Okay. Background context. I am currently in the process of moving from offering the services out of my home to actually offering the services at a professional location. Hey, girl. So my intuition told me when she called and asked, because first of all, she called and asked me to have an appointment that day. Okay, which isn't normally a big deal, but that day I had a lot going on and it just it just wasn't a good time. So I told her, you know what, it's not a good time. How about next week? Now, in retrospect, what I should have said was it's not a good time. I'm actually in the process of moving into a new space. Um, Please, you know, reschedule after this date. Or something of of that, something of that nature, okay? But I didn't do that. I tried to, quote unquote, squeeze her in during a transition, okay? So her appointment was supposed to be today. We discussed it. She wanted to come at 1130 a.m. And I told her, that's not really the most ideal time. Can we do 230? She agreed. We said, okay. I sent her the booking link, okay, because the way that my business is set up, you can't just walk in, you can't just ring my doorbell, you have to come in advance, you have to plan in advance, you have to pay in advance. Um, I have a lot of boundaries set up around my business because I, um, I like to be able to gather information about my clients before they just show up. All right, and so we discussed 2.30, okay, and I sent her the link. Now, on my calendar... 2.30 was not the only slot available. However, I assumed, which was wrong, that because we had the conversation and agreed on 2.30, that that would be the time that she picked, okay? That was not the time she picked. She picked 11.30, even though we literally had just had the conversation and I let her know that 11.30 was not a great time for me, okay? So, long story short, okay, um... I, I should have, uh, there's so many, so, and as I go through and retell the story, there's so many points where I should have inserted a boundary, okay? Because I could have contacted her right then and there and said, hey, I saw you schedule it for 1130. We said it was going to be 230. I'm going to approve this because that's the other thing. I have to approve my appointments too. You can't just schedule and then just think you're coming, all right? You have to be approved. And she was never approved, which means she was never charged, Thank you so much for being proud of me and my journey. So, um, where was I? I was talking about the fact that, oh, I I could have nipped it in the bud. I could have said, hey, you know, we we, we agreed on this time. You you scheduled that time. No, I didn't. Okay, because I was like, you know what? I can do 1130. I'll make it work. All right. Here comes today, the day of her appointment. Take my children to drop them off at school. Apparently, they don't have school today. The school never contacted any of the parents because there were other parents there. They did it by word of mouth last week, which, no God, not for elementary school. You need to email all the parents. And um, and plus, they weren't with me. They were with their at their dad's house last week. We co-parent. 
So anyway, long story short, plans change. The children come home for the day, okay? I'm feeling a little bit funky today, and I'm like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and reschedule this entire appointment because it's turning out not to be the best day, okay? So I text this woman who was supposed to be coming at 2.30 but decided on 11.30, and I said, hey, you know, um, unfortunately, I'm going to need to reschedule our appointment, she responds very um, rudely and says, oh, you know, you could have, I specifically scheduled this a week in advance so that you would, you know, you would blah, 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 blah. First of all, she didn't schedule a week in advance. I think she called me on Thursday or Friday of last week. It's Tuesday. That's not a full week. That's fine. Okay. So, and I let her know. I said, she said, well, what's, what's better today? either 1130 or 230. And I was like, actually, today is not the best day. Can we do another day? And she responds, oh, well, you know what, if that's very unfortunate. Thank you for your services. Okay, you, you, you didn't get any services. Okay, fine. Now, here's the here's the interesting part. Okay, because I know better, and I know enough to know the power of my thoughts. All right. Immediately, my mind went to, oh, I hope she doesn't try to give me a negative Google review, okay? That's immediately where my mind went. Now, admittedly, this has been like a subconscious underlying fear of mine since I started my business, has been to receive a negative review, a, a real actual negative review, okay? Not some weirdo that's like, because I, I got a couple of those on Facebook, like, oh, it doesn't work, and from men, like, why are you on my page? Like, what are you talking about? So in that thought, and I want y'all to really get this, in that thought, excuse me, I feel like I created it. Literally, when I tell you not 10 minutes later, the email came across my screen, You've received a one-star review from insert name. Okay. So now there's two schools of thought. Well, actually there's infinite schools of thought, but one may say, well, you just, that was a coincidence that you thought, oh, she, I hope she doesn't leave a negative review. <sighs> now I know enough to know that I created that negative review with that thought. Okay. Okay. Just like I know enough to know that I create and we all create everything with our thoughts. My hubby's walking up, so I'm going to let him walk by so I can finish. What's up? Hi, honey. Oh, are you on your I'm live? on live, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, babe. Are you welcome? I'm not going to knock camera. I'm telling them the story of... Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Dreading this as I expose my business to more people. Oh, my God. No, we're, I'm just, it's a good thing. Bye, uh, babe. Don't bye. Be, yeah. Uh, don't even, mm. <laughs> don't even say nothing. Mm. So, okay, baby. So, dreading this as I expose my business to more people. And so, let's talk about it. Thank you so much. So, let's talk about, let's stop this story for a moment and talk about that, okay? As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, and Number one, thank you, God, for this experience as we round up the certification course, because this is a beautiful example of something that I can share with my um, with my steam coaches about the best way to handle these types of things. OK, because it was actually something that I had never experienced before. So. I didn't really have that to draw from and I really like to share in the certification I like to share my experiences um, with my coaches so that they can know how to handle or they can have some point of reference when they if and when they ever go through these things in their steam businesses all right and steaming is one of those services that is very nuanced you know what I mean it's very you know it's not like going and getting your hair done or your nails done or you know something that's more streamlined or mainline it's something that's very nuanced for yes god wellness it's something that's very spiritual it's very holistic um it's not a trendy thing with yes god wellness it's not a let's drink champagne and and toast and all that it's not that thing for us and and that's nothing against anyone who that is for and that's not to say that you know that it there isn't a time and space for it to be that thing for Yes God Wellness, steaming is about going inside, finding God inside, and 
allowing God to guide um, our, our optimal health, okay? It's about allowing God to guide us through intuition. It's about releasing things that are not serving us emotionally and energetically. It's about, because the thing about it is, is that any physical ailment or any physical manifestation of a health issue is always coming from an energetic root okay and so that's what yes god wellness is about that's what the certification is about all right thoughts become things absolutely so jumping kind of back on the story you know again initially i immediately from the first conversation the so okay i'm, I'm i don't want to jump around because i tend to do that <laughs> when I tell stories. So I'm going to finish the story and then I'm going to go back to the revelations. All right. So of course, when I see this review, I'm already on the defensive. Okay. Cause I'm already like, Oh, you know, angry, kind of irritated with myself that I didn't, you know, I should have done this. I should have told her, no, I should have said no, not this time. I should have, should have, should have, should have, should have. Right. So I'm already in this very defensive space. And then you know, so that comes out in my response, even in the story that I shared earlier, like, well, I got time today, I'm gonna let her know about herself. And that's exactly what I did. I let her know about herself. I was like, listen, you know, uh, we agreed to a time you didn't adhere to it. So I already knew what you was about up front. Okay. And let's be clear about this, even though it was not the appropriate space to do that on in a response to a Google review, it is absolutely still the truth. When people show you character traits, and they show you a glimpse into their energetic and emotional state, you need it is the best practice to accept that as who they are. Okay, it doesn't mean they can't change doesn't mean they won't ever change. But what it does mean is that right now that is who they are. OK, so the fact number one that she wanted to rush over that day, OK, um, was kind of a little bit of a red flag. And then number two, the fact that we agreed on a time and she specifically not 10 minutes later went not even five minutes later, went and booked a time completely opposite of what we agreed on was a second red flag. OK, so I was defensive. I went in. I was like and I basically told her that I was like, you know what? I should have listened to my intuition. Um, you know, you, your energy, not you, but your energy was already giving me entitlement, arrogance, inconsideration. Okay. None of these things are untrue. However, just like I teach in my certification course. Okay. When you are intentional and really, um, you really want to operate at a higher level of consciousness, it's very important to be compassionate, okay? And what that means is meeting people where they are, all right? It doesn't always mean giving people a piece of their mind. It's okay for you to observe and take that information, but it doesn't mean you have to give it back to them. It doesn't mean, mean that they're ready to receive that, okay? And honestly, at this point where I am right now, I don't actually regret saying those things. I think that she needed to see that. I think she needed to receive that feedback. However, and here's another gem. I am so grateful for my friends. Okay. And this is very important. It's very important to have friends that are not just always going to agree with you. Right. It's very important to have friends that are going to hold you accountable to your highest self. Okay. So, and I have, thank you, God, I have lots of friends, all right? Like actual, like not just associates, like actual real life friends that like I've known for 20 plus years. Those are my girls. Those are my dogs. Like they know my business, all of it. All right. So I can promise you that every one of my friends that I called, and I think it was two, one of them was not available. <laughs> You know, they kind of gave me some pushback and they were like, you know, when I told them about my response to the Google review, they were like, mm, that's not like you. Like, are you OK? What's going on? And, you know, when we're in this defensive mode and we're in this kind of place, it's easy to just want to dismiss people. Oh, you don't understand. Like, mm -mm, I don't care. And that's what I was. And I was like, I don't care. Like she had that coming. OK. And then I called my other girlfriend and she not only did she kind of say, OK, that doesn't sound like you, 
you know, that doesn't sound like Yes God Wellness. That's where it got me because she was like, that doesn't sound like what Yes God Wellness would do and what Yes God Wellness would stand for. And I was like, (sighs) and you know what? She was right. So not only did she hold me accountable, but she offered suggestion. She was like, you know what, Megan, maybe you should handle it like this. And she actually provided an alternate um, resolution or response. And she was absolutely right. And so long story short, and I'm going to go back over the story after I just kind of go over what, what I did and what happened. So basically, I took, my, I took my response to my review down where I was basically letting her know about herself. And I, first of all, the first thing first, before I even responded, I texted her because obviously we had had, we were doing a text conversation before this Google thing came into the, the picture. I texted her and I apologized. Okay. Because, and, and, and this is the part that I want us to really glean some, some wisdom and some understanding from is that you can be right and still be wrong you can be justified in a certain response and it still not be the best course of action okay actually I don't even really like to use right and wrong but I will say that it's always my intention to go the best route and so this and I'm gonna tell you exactly what the conversation with my girlfriend was she was like Megan I was like yes Danny. She said, first of all, let's 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 take let's go in her shoes. Let's go to her perspective and let's look at this. And I was like, but this is what I teach. (laughs) Right. So it's important also to hold ourselves accountable to our own standards. Right. Like this is what I teach and what I preach all the time. Be compassionate, show love, be forgiving, Um, you know, all of these things. So. I was like, okay, let's, okay, Danny, take me, take me through her point of view. All right. And sometimes you, and this is why it's so important to have good friends and to have friends around you that again, will hold you to the highest version of yourself. So we went back through it. She said, first of all, she called you and she wanted an appointment immediately that day. Okay. So from her perspective, there's something going on. Okay. She needs, she needs something now, right? So initially, that was my first opportunity, okay? That was my first opportunity to do some more information gathering and say, you know, we don't have anything available today, but can you share with me what's going on? Are you coming to STEAM for something specific? Maybe I can give you some tips or, you know, something that you can do in the meantime, okay? So that was number one place where I could have um done something different versus trying to schedule her and just kind of ignore that ignore that communication that she was giving me and she didn't come out and say hey I got something urgent going on but the fact that she wanted to come in right then and there that was a that was a sign okay also even still today the fact that we talked about a certain time of day that was in the afternoon she wants to come in the morning okay still there was a lot of opportunities there for me to um, be compassionate, you know, be more in tune with what her needs were, okay? And also, you know, from a professional standpoint, regardless of whatever we discussed, I should have sent her a booking link that actually had only the time slot available that I preferred to have, right? I could have taken the time, I could have went in there, I could have booked my calendar, I could have blocked it off, and I could have made it easy. (laughs) You know what I mean? Made it easy for everyone, all right? Or I could have said, hey, you know what? How about we wait until after the transition? There were a lot of things I could have done differently, okay? So long story short, I went back, I apologized. I offered her a free steam, um, you know, and so the reason why I want to come back on and share that is because I just feel like there's so many gems in this situation, even for me. And I not even to imply that I have have taken all the gems out thus far. Um, 
I was just about to share speaking towards compassion. I love this so on point. Yes, God. It's so important, y'all. Like, and also it's so important to choose love over being right. You know what I mean? Because like, from my perspective, I'm right. And you know what? I'm right about my rightness. From her perspective, she's right. And she is right about her rightness. You know what I mean? She is right from her perspective. I am right from my perspective. It is possible for both people or however many people to be right and it still not be the loving thing. So I think what's so important to take away here is that think about the perspective of love. Think about the perspective of compassion. Think about the perspective of kindness. Think about those perspectives instead of rightness okay and I'm talking to myself first and foremost this is a firsthand example of Megan McPherson Jones um, being right from her perspective but not being right from the perspective of love and what's so important is that we are we have the humility within us to be able to take that criticism from from God from the world from our friends from whoever okay come on Megan ambiguous yes God (laughs) yes God so I hope this message has helped someone um also from a professional perspective from a business perspective other people are going to look at those reviews right other people are going to look at my response I want to come from a place of love period okay even though, you know, I gave her a piece of my mind, I let her know about her. Bu- 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 I don't want to be in that vibration, ultimately. Okay, I don't want to be an example of rightness. I want to be an example of love. Okay, and everybody may not be there. Everybody may not feel like, I want to be an example of love over rightness. There was a very long time in my life where I didn't give a damn about that. I was going to tell you about yourself. I was going to let you know. I was going to give you the reading from A to Z and not skip any letters in between. And I don't give a damn how you felt, how your mama felt, how everybody else felt in the process. Okay. And I, and, and I don't give a damn about no love neither. I love myself and that's all I know. But that is a defense mechanism. That is a coping mechanism. And that is something that honestly tells the world and people who are um, at a different level of consciousness how you truly feel, okay? Just like I was able to glean information from about her based on just our communication and maybe she didn't come out and directly say things, um, I'm also able to look at myself and be like, Megan, you're, you're better than that. Don't, don't do that. You don't, you don't got to go there. You don't have to do that. Yes, you can do that. Yes, you're capable of doing that. Yes, you may be very good at doing that. And, you know, one of my girlfriends I was talking to, she was talking about how her and her children, you know, back in the day, like when people would be drilling each other and somebody would say something and they'd be like, ooh. (laughs) So she does this with her children, right? She like her children will say something and they'll be like, ooh. So, um. I knew the the vibration I was at because when we were talking about the the reviews, you know, I was telling her, I was like, <laughs> I was, I was doing that. I was like, I saw her review and I was like, Ooh, and then I wrote her a review back and it was like, Ooh, <laughs> childish, childish, really childish, funny, but childish. So anyways, I'm going to go in the house now with my family. I wanted to come and talk to my Yes God family and say that it's okay to be wrong. Okay. It's okay to be right, but wrong. It's okay to be right and right. It's okay to, it's, it's okay wherever you are. Okay. Wherever you are, it is okay. It is where you need to be right now. And um, what matters is the strides that you're taking towards what your best self is and what you want to be, okay? You're so welcome. You are so, so welcome. Yes, God. Yes, in my God self. So, you know, there's so many different versions of us and 
my aspiration is to be in the God version of me. How God sees me, I want the world to see me. I want to see myself first and foremost. I want to see myself that way. You know, I want to see myself in that Jesus Christ consciousness of understanding how powerful my thoughts are, understanding how powerful my words are, understanding how powerful my love is, understanding that the love that I can bring to a situation is far more powerful than any way that I can go off or tell anybody about themselves. Okay, so I texted her, I apologized, she apologized back. And it was just beautiful, you know, and I told her, hey, listen, she she let me know, you know, what her career was, which is a very demanding career. Like, it just made so much sense. And I was like, oh, man, she needs to come steam for real. And it just was a reminder to me, like, Megan, you need to be compassionate. You need to be loving and you need to be professional, you know, and you need to honor your own boundaries. If you are not in a space where you can give your best to your clients, you need to not take clients right then and there. OK, you need to not do that. And so integrity is what it's about. Love is what it's about. And honor is what it's about. And so, um, you know, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to, again, you know, be where I am in my life to be able to accept that opposing view, um, be where I am, that I'm able to be transparent with my people and my clients and my friends and my family be where I am that I have magnetized people in my life that see my God self and hold me to that standard, no matter what temporary emotions I'm going through, no matter what pride and, and, and all that stuff that I, that I may have in my ego at the time where I'm like, "Mm, mm, 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 mm," you know, no matter what imbalance of masculine energy where I feel like I got (laughs) up. So, I love y'all. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'm definitely going to upload this video to my YouTube channel, Yes God Wellness. Um, If you haven't checked out my YouTube channel, please do. Please subscribe. I put a lot of good content over there. There's been a lot of good content uploaded over there for several years now. And um, Yes God, you're the best too, girl. I love you so much. Thank you so much. So I had petitioned all of my beautiful clients to go over to my google page yes god wellness on google and and leave me a positive review i would still love for you to do that (laughs) um if you can wonderful if you have already thank you so much if you can't that's okay too um you know what i'm grateful for is that this is the exception and not the norm you know because i used to live like that the my response earlier and how i felt earlier and how i was just like i'm gonna be right and i'm gonna Like, I used to be that person most of the time. And I'm so grateful for steaming, and I'm so grateful for wisdom. I'm so grateful for my age. I'm so grateful for my experiences that that have all taught me. Being right ain't ain't, ain't the best, and I want to be the best. And you know what's the best? God. As a matter of fact, yes, God. So that's, again, what yes, God is about. I want to say yes to God in every situation. And guess where God is? I want to say yes to God every time. Okay. Still providing space. Beautiful. Yes, God. So thank you so much, everybody. I love you. And I will talk to you soon. Okay. Have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your day. Bye.